And we are back, and we just finished watching 1993's The Joy Luck Club, rated R with a runtime of two hours and 19 minutes. Rated R? What the hell was rated R about this film? Maybe the uh, the Russell Long scenes with the... Well. And there was also, like, I guess they show like, what they didn't really show it, but one of the characters got raped. Oh, right, right, so right. There's, there's some, there's some adult themes going on. Yes. There. Okay. I was, I was confused for a sec. I mean, it seems relatively tame compared Compa- to the stuff compared you to watch nowadays. Today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those scenes would have been way more graphic now. Absolutely. Um, even anime of that stuff would have probably been way more graphic. You know, it's strange. Mm. They also would have been way more graphic in the eighties. Yes. True. Like what was going on in the nineties? The nineties were just st- such a nice, such a nice decade. Was it? Yeah. Eh, I could take it or leave it. People were happier in the nineties. Guess. Anyway. Anyway, this is based off Amy Tan's novel by the same name, with a screenplay to credit to Amy Tan and Ron Bass, and this was directed by Wayne Wang. Who did he? Is he the one that did Eat a Bowl of Tea? I, I love that no movie. No idea. Russell Wong's in that too. Yep. He was the director. It was, came out in 1989. I saw that on PBS and I loved it. <laughs> I had a VHS copy of it. Okay. <laughs> Has nothing to do with this film. This I, is, I just remember, I think there was like a show on Channel 11 with Russell Wong. And for some reason, the announce, you know, the Channel 11 announcer. I love that guy. That guy. Yeah. It was just like, Russell Wong is. He just kept saying his name like Russell Wong was this major star. <laughs> and like, I just remember watching the commercial and, and thinking, who the hell is Russell Wong? <laughs> but apparently he was just the best thing ever because he was in some, I forgot what the hell the show was called, like Foreign Son or Prodigal Son. Or I don't know. Some. No, that's the guy from Walking Dead, Prodigal Son. He has a, sh- which guy from Walking Dead? Yeah, the guy, Jesus, whatever his name was, Tom Payne. This show was in the the nineties, so I, I they, they could have had this. They could have yeah. they could have had the Tom same. Tom Payne name. was probably just born. Yeah. All right, let's reel it back in. We're all over the place tonight. Yeah. This is the story of four women who tell their. This, I mean, the way this is the way this is. I I remember reading the book. And liking it a lot. And I think then I think the second part was The Kitchen God's Wife, which I also purchased and and liked. I don't think I liked it as much as this book. But I have no recollection of this novel. And even watching it now, I'm like, yeah. I mean, I know it was about mothers and daughters, but I don't remember anything about it. I didn't read the book, and I've never seen the movie. What did you think? It was all right. It's not a jump up and down about the know. Joy Luck Club or the Raid Redemption. The Raid Redemption, ten out of ten times. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I, this is a different movie. It's oh god, come on, it's <laughs> not even. Even with it, don't 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 even that's, sexual content. Yeah, no, no, this, this this isn't that kind of movie. I mean, I'm not saying that it's bad or anything. I'm uh, I'm just saying, in, uh, like, okay, in the scope of action films, the Raid is like the top of the heap, mm-hmm. whereas the scope of films about mothers and daughters, the Joy Luck Club is eh, floating around the middle somewhere. All right, fair enough, fair enough. What did you like about the film? I mean, it was interesting hearing all their, their backstories, and, and some of them were quite interesting. The the one who was, like, forced into the arranged marriage. Oh, my God, she that, was my that, favorite. That, that, that was, was such a fun story, That was right? an entertaining story, yeah. and... Uh, and then there's the tragic story of, of the one whose mother became like the fourth wife. Yeah. And the other tragic story, the the woman who... Who lost her two babies. Well, well, yeah, I guess that too. But I was thinking about the one who was married to Russell Wong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they all had pretty shitty lives. Except for the one... I mean, even the one that was sort of married off. I mean, it well, wasn't she, fun, the but thing she... Was, yeah, but she well, was clever enough to get out of she it. She was clever enough to get to get out of her situation. Yeah, and sort of like come out, I guess, on top. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, the one who married Russell Wong, that was like she was traumatized yeah. from that whole situation. Yeah, because even the daughter was like, like her mother was barely there. Like she was kind of like a ghost of yeah. herself or a shell of herself. Yeah. Although so. she got her shit together 
when her daughter needed her. Yes. Which was nice. And it, and it helped her daughter out because right. her daughter's husband was a douchebag. Douchebag. Oh, my God. So it was nice to see in the next scene that she was with someone else. Yeah, someone who, like, cared about her and, I guess, she seemed more alive. She wasn't yes. this, like, little and mousy, happy. This little mousy, mousy thing. thing. Yeah, that was making just all sorts of ridiculous concessions, concessions to yeah. this douchebag. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and he seemed very into his mother in law, I guess, right? He was she was like, Oh, you know, he even asked her to come with on vacation with us or something. Yeah, I, I felt like the story mechanism here was interesting how the stories interwove from one mother to daughter into the next and most of them are tragic, but there is that underlying sense of I guess ultimately what Ming Na says, which is basically hope. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you hope better for the next generation. You hope better for your progeny. You hope better that your life experience and your history somehow illuminates the path to the, the children that come after and that you guide them to a better life. In most, in most of the cases, yeah. Like it was it was funny because uh, Lindo just basically wanted her daughter to to feel like she didn't measure up to her expectations, <laughs> and that made her happy. <laughs> that was she was my favorite auntie. She, she was, was uh, buck wild, damn. And like, she, and then she tells she tells um, what's McNaught's name? I forget. Junie. Junie. She's like, yeah, I I may have signed the letter, your mom's name. Yeah. And she's like, but you got to tell, tell them. She's like, no. Nope. No, that's your job. That's your job now. <laughs> Fuck that. She was a ball she, buster. Yeah, and then she's, <laughs> it's not even like, I'm sorry. It's just like, this is the best. And then she just turns her head away from her. <laughs> like, like any rebuttal will just like bounce off the back of her head unnoticed. <laughs> And it probably would have. She was definitely the alpha because the even the other two aunties were like, "You really, you really need to say something to her." Yeah. And she's like, "She's just like, no, I'll, I'll say it later, <laughs> like, yeah. not now." Yeah, I know what's best. <laughs> and I and I like how this is obviously a very Asian production with all Asian actors, mm-hmm. and well, mostly Asians. I think there's two non-Asian husbands in it, but for the most part, mostly Asians. But I also like how they interweave a little history, a little of the culture traditions into a lot of the story. Yeah, yeah they were describing some some things. I was like, "That's really bizarre." Yeah, I, I would not want to eat my daughter's flesh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the highest honor, though. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I mean not to go off on a tangent, but we did talk about that recently. How crazy tra- quote unquote traditions are th- to the point where people do things they don't even know why they do them. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, especially religion. I'm looking at you. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of religious traditions where it's just like, what? <laughs> it's just like I think I said back then. Some guy with a pointy hat said, "This is how we got to do it because the guy upstairs, if you don't do it, he's, he's gonna, gonna be super wipe pissed. your ass out." <laughs> Smite. He's going to smite you. That is a great word. Uh, Did you have a favorite character? (laughs) Am I one of the kids? Yes. (laughs) I guess June. Most of it's told through her vantage point. The one I found most entertaining was Lindo. Yes. Because she was just... Just She did not give a damn. No. She was was hardcore. She was just... Yeah, she was hard as nails. Yeah. Just the total see you next Tuesday... (laughs) And unapologetic <laughs> about it. What did you think of the of the the second generation? Who was the most hardcore? Was it Waverly? I don't know. It definitely wasn't. Uh, what was her name? Rose. Rose was the one that was married to Andrew McCarthy. That that was weird because all of a sudden, I guess their marriage fixed itself. I was like, wait, what? Well, I mean, that was that was probably the easiest one to see what the problem was. It was clear that the reason why he had lost interest in the marriage is because she changed herself because she thought that that's what he would want to, that that's what he wanted. And the thing that he liked about her was when she would, when she spoke her mind. Right, right. And then she just totally became subservient. And like the the real telling part of that whole thing was not just in the crap she said, but that one scene where she like walks up, she takes his arm, he spills a little wine on the floor and she just gets immediately on her knees and starts mopping it up with a napkin. Right, right. And it's just like, what the hell are you you doing? doing? Yeah, yeah. 
You I have everybody else. Yeah, you've you hired can. all the help to do everything else. Yeah, Let this, them do this, this as well. This guy's parents live on like one of those crazy palatial vineyard estates yeah. where they got statues just peeing everywhere. And and <laughs> and she's like worried about, oh, there's some wine spilt on the floor. Get out of here. Why that like that I could see like okay, she's lost herself. She is no longer the person that he married and that that was like like i said to me that was like the sort of the most obvious story mm-hmm. as to why he had checked out yeah and then you know he checked out so bad that he cheated on her and then that was it yeah and then after the discussion with the mom right about finding her about worth finding her worth she finally realized you know okay i gotta you know fight for myself fight for myself and it was funny because the mom was just like you, you know, you ju- you became just like my mom, right? And she was like, I tried to raise you so differently. I tried to raise you so different, but th- there it is. And you know, I want you to be to be more. And so then, I guess she became more, and it it allowed their marriage to reconcile. I guess she forgave him for his infidelity. Uh, but when she was talking to him, didn't did she say I died? So she almost like assumed. She said, I died from eating heroin biscuits or whatever the hell. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, what? Wait a minute. That was, yeah, that was a little bit kind of. A little too much. A little too artsy. Yeah. Like like she was channeling a dead person. But yeah. Like that's sort of like, I guess she was trying to speak metaphorically, but how the hell would he know? No. Yeah. Well, he said, I'm listening. That would mean nothing to him. Yeah. But yeah, he was listening. I guess he just liked. Hearing what she had to say when she was his own, when she was her own person, person. she had her own identity. Right. So. Well, he said that in that pre, I guess, final argument where he's like, well, what, what do you, you what think? What do you want? Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to hear what you have to say. I want to hear you. So, yeah, that to me, that was that was like the easiest story to pick up on. I it, didn't think it. I didn't think they would reconcile amicably. Oh, I really don't remember the book, honestly. No, I guess they did. Yeah. And I thought Waverly was going to leave Rich after all his faux pas at the dinner table. Uh, I, I didn't really see that because he just didn't know. Right. I mean, he, he really is the outsider in this case. And, and it wasn't like he was doing stuff. Maliciously. Maliciously. It wasn't, he just was ignorant of he just, it was, customs. Yeah, he did not know the customs. And uh, she, I think she understood that, the fact that. He, yeah. yeah. And also... I don't. I don't think she. It, I don't. Th- I honestly. I don't think it bothered her that much that her mom might not be so enamored with this guy, considering he wasn't Asian. Uh huh. Well, she said her first husband was Asian. She did it yeah. to please her mother, but even yeah. that wasn't enough. Yeah. So, why bother? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, all the stories were interesting. The, the yeah. characters were. Let's talk for, about for how Migna Wan never ages. God damn. She never ate no, never ages. She actually looks better now. What's what is she doing? What is, what is going on? I don't yeah. know. We she, gotta get on like, her diet. She's on the that Mandalorian show and she or no, she was on the land. She was yeah, on that she terrible was. Boba Fett show. There oh, you go. Avoid at all costs if you love Boba Fett. Or although if you want to watch it with Migna, just turn the sound down, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot to She's see. a hot fox. Uh but yes, yeah, yeah. How, she is, how a hot is fox. she aging in reverse? I don't know. We should try to interview her and, <laughs> and ask her that. Either that or try to figure out where she lives and go through her trash. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, she should write a book. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what her daily rituals and routines and diet is. I'm sure she's not sucking down salty, woven, whole wheat crackers at as far, 10 at night. As far as snacks go, that really isn't a great snack. Yeah. Let's let's be honest. It's not like you're eating pork rinds or something. Whole wheat. It's basically shredded wheat with salt on it. Yeah, it's awful. Anyway, um, what else? What, did you have a favorite scene in this? Did you? Was there anything that you found impactful? The ending, maybe? Not really. I got really, it made me. It made me misty. Really? Yeah, a little. Nothing, I mean, not nothing, like the whale sobbing, but nothing. Nothing about it really got to me. I got to be honest. I wasn't really impressed with anybody's performance. Some some of the performances just. I don't know. It didn't. It, I can see that. It felt very like we're reading from a script. I can see that, but I think it was still a decent story. And again, I like how 
the storytelling mechanism of like sort of like the handoff. It goes from the mother to the daughter, and then yeah, yeah. It it was interesting how they like the yeah the the, the mechanics of the of the story were were well done. There was a lot to go through though. Yeah. They, I mean, they had to go through, yeah. Yeah, I got a. They probably could have ditched one of those pairings. Maybe the, maybe the mousy girl and her mom. But that was still compelling because in that moment, she remember she's like, "I'm going to become that tiger in the, in the reeds," and like. Yeah, I mean, there's there's good parts to all of them, but like, yeah, I I don't really feel like they were all necessary. They could have knocked a half hour off this movie, I think. Where though, I don't know where. Just instead of three aunties, two aunties. I mean, they're all interesting stories, but mm, I don't really, none of them really like hooked me where I was super fascinated. All right. Uh, I, 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 this, this probably, I'm not the target audience of this movie. No, you're not. No. You don't have too much, you don't have enough estrogen probably. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? Because you're right. I don't have enough estrogen. It's not, not for me. There wasn't enough kicking. Or foot shimmy. Or foot shimmy or any of that. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be stereotyping, but there could have been a couple of punches thrown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's it's hard to adapt a novel that's been so critically received and beloved by readers. There's a certain obligation there, right? And I think that... It's a huge undertasking to do that because you don't want to lose the magic of the book, but then you also are limited by time because you can't, unless you're doing like a mini series, right? Mm -hmm. You have to work within the parameters of a feature film. Most yeah. feature films, and this is kind of long for 1993, two hours and change. So you're already you're batting a thousand wall, here yeah. because... You're doing a very niche story with a completely Asian cast. Well, a 98% Asian cast, right? Mm -hmm. Which, I don't know, in 93, was that a big box office drawer? I mean, unless you're like hard-boiled or something, it, it's a different yeah, audience, that, right? I, mean, that, so, I imagine this would have probably been a tough sell for most movie production studios because they'd be like... Well, what do you mean? There's no karate in it or something, right? That, that's or no all big they, they, actors. No big actors. Yeah. They, they, I mean, I know who Andrew McCarthy is, but I'm. I doubt he's selling this film. Well, he's not. He's in it for like what ten minutes, if that. Yeah. Yeah. But even still, even like, still, he was never a big <laughs> A-list actor, right? Yeah. It's like, what did he do during this time? Like weekend at Bernie's, <laughs> which was a huge monster. Hit. Yeah. Let's let's not even go there. I guess. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I mean, you, it's it's kind of a hard film to review, I guess, because it's there's so many things here that, I mean, there's a lot of things at work. There's some things like I agree with you. I think some of it was may have been too much, but it's weird because it's like now it feels like two hours is like this the norm for movies. It's not unless you're doing a horror film, right? In which case, you kind of sh can like truncate that but most movies now are at least two hours if not more so it's not like it's longer it's just the pacing is different this is a movie from 1993 so the pacing is different the storytelling is very slow right well you know what you know what i think is the disconnect uh, uh, for me okay so you have these characters mm -hmm. uh there's the four mothers and the four daughters mm -hmm. And then there's sort of like this overarching thing where one of them, one of the mothers has passed and she, the, the daughter is going to visit the long lost siblings that, that, she has. that she had. And then they start talking, they start going into this one's story and this one's story and this one's story and this one's story. There wasn't much of a connection between that and the main overarching story. Right, right. It was sort of like this is a series of little vignettes. It, it was almost like an anthology movie rather than a movie. And I feel like that's kind of where... It went wrong. That's kind of, yeah, it, or it went wrong for me. I'm, I think this film did well. I think a lot of people like this movie. Yeah. I mean, I heard about this film constantly when it came out. Yeah. But, but it probably would have done better as like a limited series. Like if you yeah, did it now, I, I could see it, it more as a limited series. Also, I don't know. Like, 
what was the book different? Was there more of a connection between these other women's lives? I couldn't tell you. I read the book once. I mm. I'm pretty sure I enjoyed it because the the fact that there really wasn't any sort of connection, like I didn't, they didn't really go into any details as to why those four four mothers were friends. Right, right. It was you just never got like, a how did they how, they, how did they meet? I think she said they met at church. They were friends from church and then they had this so that's friendship just that sort of like, a, like 30 sort years. Of like a, yeah, but it's sort of like a throwaway. You know, they, they met at church. And if you're making this sort of like connection, oh, they were so close. Why don't we, why aren't, why, why don't, why, why don't their, why don't their, why don't their personal stories intertwine in such a way right. That show that there was this close bond, right? And how all of their all of their mothers were connected to the daughters because it was sort of like like with the mousy daughter, you barely saw her in the movie. Yeah, you just it was just like oh, there's another daughter there. Oh, they they have their own story too. But there's they have like zero connection to Ming Na, who's or Junie, the, who's the main, main character. character and the storyteller. And, and at least, at least sort of there was like a connection between Junie and Waverly mm -hmm. because there was sort of like this rivalry mm -hmm. yeah, going on. And rivalry. there was sort of like a rivalry between the two mothers. mothers. Right. But the others, there was no connection. Yeah. There was like, they were completely just outside of that, that main story. And they had their own stories, which were fascinating. But I want the whole thing. I want it to all come together. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this would have worked better as a limited series because then you could really delve into those those areas. And I agree with you. I think that, I mean, I think the intention was to highlight mothers and daughters. And they do it with even the previous generations where, like, the mothers here talk about their mothers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And then you have the four young women talking about their mothers. But I, I agree with you. I think to some point, maybe you get rid of all the daughters. Maybe they're like peripheral characters. You don't even dwell on them. But kind of like what you said, like why were these four women so entrenched in each other's lives? Like go yeah, into the explanation of together. that. It couldn't have just been, oh, we just sat next to each other at church one day. Right, right. Like playing Mahjong. There had to have been a connection of some sort, yeah. something whether it was cultural, whether they all came over on the same airplane or boat or whatever, like it, there should have been more to that. I agree with you. Yeah. I think that would have made the story more compelling. And I think that, yeah, streamlining it, I think, I mean, maybe leave Waverly's story because again, like you mentioned the competition between her and, and June, but Rose and Lena, probably yeah. not necessary. Yeah. Yeah. And even the competition was sort of like didn't really go much go into it. There was anywhere. like a couple of lines here and there. Oh, she 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 tricked me again or Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did she really? Yeah. And then they have like that fight at the table that was just like, "Why are you talking about this crap now?" Now, right, right. Let yeah. me just humiliate you in front of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> You're a bad writer or yeah. something like that. Now that I think about it, that scene probably could have gone away too. Yeah. Anyway, I think I've said all I need to say about this movie. One to ten. Uh, yeah, I'll probably give it a six. Six. I think I would also. Well, maybe I'll give it a six and a half. Okay. I think it was again. I I really like the storytelling mechanism. I thought that was very clever. But I agree with you. I mean, I think it might have been a little too much. I think in this day and age, I'm surprised somebody hasn't tried to reboot this somewhere. I think in this day and age, making it a limited series, if you if you really want to include all the characters. Go into each one a little bit more so that we get a sense. Or connect them. Or connect them. Give me a reason to understand why they were so closely knit. I mean, they were all together, like, apparently a lot. Right. Like, that whole, like, what the hell were they there for? Whose party was that? That was to... Was it a going away party? It was going her? away party for Like, why June. would any of these people care? I didn't understand that. Well, you didn't really get a sense of who these other people. I mean, the house was packed. Yeah, and you just why didn't was know the who... piano teacher always there? Were they related to him? No, I guess he was just one of those guys that was always there, like a neighbor or something. I don't know. Maybe he didn't have any family, and they took him in. Like if they had explained that, that would have been interesting too, because he yeah. really what he was like Penny. He was a constant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So six. Watch or pass. I would say it's sort of like the uh, the Sam Adams summer ale, as Bill Burr says. Uh, 
if there's nothing there. else, I'll, I'll I'll drink it. I think for I guess just to watch a story from the Asian experience, I think this is a good watch. I think the actors were all okay. I mean, I don't think that I agree with you. There wasn't really any standout performances and stuff, but that might have just been the script. And I mean, again, like I, there's I, I believe so you can do. You know what? I, I believed Lindo. She was the best. I believed her character the most of all of them. Uh, the young actresses, I didn't really buy any of their characters, to be honest. What about Ming Na? No. Really? I thought she really, was good. I did not think she really did that great a performance. Hmm. I got to imagine some of it just was like very, I don't Passive. know. Sappy kind of. I mean, that's the kind of movie it, this it was. Is, it is like a sappy kind of movie, but there's sort of like a, there's a line where you just sort of like. It's a, well, you know it, what? It goes from sentimental to like just schmaltzy, sappy stuff. It's okay. It's funny that so I wanted to watch this because Mother's Day is coming up, and this is Mothers and Daughters. Let's talk about that about it being too schmaltzy. You have something like Steel Magnolias. Like that's that's not that's that is that hits the notes right. Everybody's performance is powerful. I mean, even like even people who aren't really. Actresses act like Dolly Parton, great in that, great in that. I believed her a hundred percent. Truly, even uh, uh, what's her name, Daryl Hannah, playing that that Malin. Yeah, no, no, that was Sally Field. What was uh, a nail, a nail? Yeah, the religious even, girl. Even her, she she becomes religious and she says she's at at the end. She says like the line which you could see as being sappy. Oh, I'm gonna name my kid Shelby, even oh, if it's you know yeah. that could you could hold if. Uh, you could totally see that being just like sappiness. Wasn't. That was like very well put together. This, I I don't know. Maybe some more tweaks in the writer's room. Yeah. It, it, I, don't, I don't know about the right. I, I, I just, I got to be honest. I, it just felt like a, like there's, there's movie acting and there's like TV acting. I don't want to be a snob. Was but, this TV acting? But this felt like TV acting. Yeah. I, I still think, again, I, I, I know that I read the book and I think, I'm pretty sure I enjoyed it, but I couldn't tell you a damn thing about this this book. But I feel like there was a lot going on in the book. And I think that, again, you're limited because it's a feature film. So you have to make choices of what you think you want to tell this audience. So I think it's harder to cherry pick them and then cohesively put them together so that they create this story so i think that that was maybe a pitfall here but if anybody wants to pick up this property and expand on it i think it would be a worthwhile project i think it's a great especially if you could make those connections that i feel this film well i think if you if you expand on it because i i don't remember you'd have the room to make right you have the room and i i don't remember the novel being this choppy i i remember liking it there was a certain lyricism to the the tonality and the and the and the the words in the actual novel that you don't get here again this is a different medium from novels so it's it's different as a as a filmmaker you have to kind of take all the things in the novel and smash them together and and have this other piece of art which is film which is storytelling which is sort of like a novel but not right and uh it wasn't steel magnolias but it wasn't crawl <laughs> So yeah. it's somewhere in the middle. I think, again, if you are a fan of Asian actors and actresses and want to see that representation, I think this is a great film to watch. It is currently streaming on Prime from 1993, based off Amy Tan's novel of the same name, The Joy Luck Club. There's a lot of sentimentality, I think, here. It just doesn't work as well as something like Steel Magnolias, where the writing is a little bit just more also, put I together mean, that, that and sharper. Is the, that is sort of like the benefit of just being like a, a, a more direct story. Like like I said, this really felt sort of like an anthology. Yes. And and, I that, think- and, and that's that could be good in that, like like I said, if, if it's... If you just cruise through the channel, you'll you'll catch some interesting little stories. Like everybody's individual story was, was interesting. interesting. Yeah, but it just wasn't but expanded upon enough. You're to- 
you're sort of like presenting it in this box where it's like, oh, well, this is all a big story. And these smaller stories are facets of that bigger story, but it's not. But you not. still don't it's find not. the connective there are, tissue there. There's to no connective tissue between any of the stories, really. Yeah. It's just sort of like, oh, well, we each have our own problems with our mothers and our mothers had their issues with their know, mothers, with their yeah. mothers growing up. And OK, that's great. You know what? Make four movies about that. You yeah. know, they, the, you, they're all fascinating stories, but yeah. together and the way you presented it as some sort of story about, I guess, finding these other missing relatives. Sisters, yeah. It just doesn't connect. It's sort of like yeah, and and having having all that chaos in there kind of takes away from the story of June finding her sisters, right? Because yeah. you don't get to yeah. At the end, it's just like all right, yeah, yeah, mom's dead. Weep, weep, smile, smile. But I'm your little sister, Roll and I'm credits. here to bring you hope. Yeah, like what the hell would that even mean? To I, them? I don't know. It's like I'm here. Yeah, I'm you got to wrap it up nicely hope. at the end. Yeah. I brought this feather. I brought yeah. <sighs> I may as well just been like call back and then and the roll credits. Yeah, I mean as a film, not yeah, the and greatest like the, like thing. The whole but story she kept she that that swan feather story got brought up twice in the movie, and then at the very end, it was like she was surprised by it. It yeah. was like, well, why would this surprise? Right, this, you know this, it's a you, thing. You know the story, you right? Told You've been it told to the, it. You, you told it to that little kid. Yeah, you said it at the beginning of the film, yeah, even before you see anything. Film. Why is yeah, I don't know. Why is this so amazing? <laughs> hey! <sighs> These kids. All right, let's wrap it up. All right, so six and a half and a six. If you feel like checking it out, check it out on Amazon Prime. Again, the Joy Luck Club from 1993. And uh, maybe not the best mother-daughter no. stories, but... It's not the worst thing, but it's if, not if, the if worst there's nothing thing. else in the house... That's it from us. Happy Mother's Day to all that celebrate. If you are still blessed enough to have your mother on this astral plane, don't forget to give her a shout out. And if you could see her, give her a hug. And that's it from us. And we will bid you all a good night. Good night.